Hi everybody, this is Rizwan and for another Chats with Chaudhry and it's a bit of a different Chats with Chaudhry today because normally I have a vendor talking about uh, what they do as a business, looking at key issues and so on but today I'm here with my good friend Oscar Cabrizas. Hi Oscar, how you doing my man? Very good Rizwan, so good to see you. It's Sorry good to see you. we're far away. It is, I'm I know happy. but it's good to catch up with you my friend. Well look, the reason Oscar's here today is that actually he did a blog on LinkedIn, uh, I think it was last week where he talked about yes. how frustrating it was that people kept mixing up spectrometry and spectroscopy. And that's not easy for me to say, actually, I have to tell you that. So I thought, well, that's quite interesting because as a non-scientist, I get things mixed up all the time. And I'm sure there's lots of other instances where people are using the wrong terms when they're talking about things within science. So today, Oscar and I are gonna have a chat about that and see some of the examples where people get things wrong and what they should be saying instead. Uh, but before we do that, Oscar, you and I last saw each other at PitCon uh, yes. way back in March in Chicago. A lot's changed yeah. since then. So before we sort of go into some of those examples that you can talk about and what you write about in your blog, maybe you can tell people a bit about what you do anyway, in general. Sure. Well, uh, today I, I work at SciX. I am uh, the channel partner manager for the countries in Latin America. I do support our business function, but I also manage part of the applications that we develop for the region in the, in the LCMS, you know, liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry, and capillary electrophoresis business. Cool. So, so that's so before in a nutshell. We, <laughs> quite a big nut, actually. So before we talk about the examples, then a couple of things, you know, working with Sykes now under the COVID environment that we're all working with how are you finding it now working with your customers remotely and how, how are you dealing with that well it, it is challenging because i live in the united states and all of my customers are in central and south america so i can't travel anywhere so i've become a, a, a real uh, fan of this video and virtual conferencing but at the same time is draining i actually read an article the other day which right. makes sense that you don't have the personal touch. You don't really have that personal connection. So your brain is much more, uh, it's using more of its energy to keep focus on trying to drive the meetings. And it's really difficult when you're doing it uh, far away. And the, the human touch, right? The, the, the human feel of really driving conversations and helping others is not the same. So it's challenging. And at the same time, well, it's just open up a new era for, for business. Well, actually, let's touch about that because actually, I know that you have gone to a lot of events over the, oh, yeah. in, your, in your role, you know, and we've met lots of times at different shows. So, oh, yeah. but, but obviously, now with uh, lockdown in place in so many countries, you know, a lot of events have got virtual. So, how do you feel about virtual events and the future of events, given that you don't only go as an exhibitor, but you've also gone as a delegate, you've also gone as a speaker? So, have you found it now with the virtual experience that you're getting from events? Without sort of talking about any specific events, because we don't want to sort of highlight anyone yeah. in particular, but talking in general, um, what do you think about virtual events and your own experience, both from a sort of exhibitor point of view, if you've done any exhibiting uh, at a virtual event, and also from a delegate's point of view, and what do you think that, how that'll impact future events? Well, uh, you know, if I think as a scientist, right, like I'm a lab person, or I'm looking, I'm going to a conference, I typically go and, and seek information, right? The virtual podiums have been phenomenal uh, because I think the, the outreach has, has gone everywhere in the world and people have been able to continue to exchange ideas. Right, okay. But I do feel that there, we miss, I miss being at conferences. I miss, <laughs> I miss walking around the posters and meeting people and you actually meet other colleagues that are telling, hey, you need to go see this talk or did you run to that poster in the corner because it contains a really uh, sure. good piece of information and it may help you. I think that that is the, the true essence and the, and the true happiness behind conference because you get to meet with friends and mingle and not only you chat about the science, but you chat about life and it's that time. I think the virtual podiums are going to help a lot of scientists that typically don't get the approval to go to a conference or sure. go to many conferences so they can quickly grab the information in and out. But I think it'll, it'll, it'll lose that mystique. So it's, it's, an, it's a trade-off, right? Um, from the vendor perspective, it is also very challenging because, again, people go to your booth, go to somebody's booth to visit, hey, what new technology do you have? Yeah. And, and now you don't have that. You, you have to kind of really go inside and, and dig the information and, and hopefully you'll find somebody to talk. And 
I don't know how other companies would work, but um, some, some companies would have a, a bot there just answering a question and then that gets forwarded to a sales rep and then that's how it goes. So again, it, it, it's, a, it's a mix and match. I, it's challenging, but at the same time, well, you know, it's, it's easier and quicker for those people that just simply can't travel overseas sure. or, or around the country. So it's definitely going to change this, this whole new situation with the virus. It's definitely going to change the way we, we go ahead about this and hopefully it'll be better in the future. I hope so. I miss, right. I miss seeing you, man. I miss seeing yeah, you. I can see you. Well, look, I, I wore my Dolphins jersey just for you. So there you go. There so you just, go. Dan Marino, baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 1986. This one. But anyway, um, uh, talking uh, about what we originally started this whole conversation about, which is about uh, the use of terminology within science. Oh, God. Right. So let's talk about the example you did the blog on. So tell people what your blog was about uh, last week and why you brought it up. Well, so over the years, being not only at conferences, at, at poster sessions, even conversations with people that are new to science and they want to invest in the new technology so that they're opening a lab or they want to help somebody. Uh, and I see the use of, how oh, you know, mass spectroscopy or mass spectrometry and spectroscopy with masses. And I'm like, okay, well, I, was, I went to a school. I went to the University of South Carolina. I had a really great mentor and before that at a, here at FIU in, in Miami and I learned terminology and I learned terminology is very, very important when you refer to things. Right. And when I see the mixed use of between mass spectroscopy and mass spectrometry, I was like, okay, I had it. I want to write something about it and start a pot because I think people, I mean, at least from my perspective and my, my educational background, I wanted to get it right. And and again, this is how all the terminology has been put out there in the industry. I mean, mass spectrometry on its own has been now the terminology used for decades, uh, if not more. Uh, I understand, and I, I saw a few uh, a few comments and feedback, like Encyclopedias like have has defined it like, well, you can say mass spectroscopy, and uh, because there were mass spectrographs, which were the original, um, you know, want to call it mass spectrometers in the past and that's how we were educated totally fine uh it is just the current terminology who uses that today i don't there's no such technology unless i'm proven wrong um and that's why i was okay well you know what i want to i want to teach people right how to say it right and how really how to get the conversation across the spectroscopy is for optical measurements and spectrometry is for mass measurements electric you know electronically electrically however they were put um and, and that's about it. And now there's more in the, there's further terminology that also gets mixed and matched, which I will well, hopefully start blogging from my point of view soon. Well, actually we were talking about this only yesterday when we had a catch up and you were saying to me when we were yeah. preparing for this, when you were talking about sensitivity. So oh, let's talk about that. So yeah. it's like, uh, because that's obviously uh, a bugbear of yours as well. So tell people about why it's a hot button. We think about sensitivity and how people use the measurements. Well, I mean, and, and I will write, I will write my opinions about this, but, uh, and again, opinions, but based on, on educational facts, books and everything, uh, the misuse of the word or the term sensitivity is, it, it can really create controversial conversations, not only between, between amongst colleagues and scientists, but right. industry members, because I think it's one of the terms that is completely misused, especially when you want to make comparisons between, let's say, a methodology and the other, or one piece of instrument and the other. It is very widely thrown out there, in my opinion. And I think it's got to be handled case by case. And for example, I've seen people confuse sensitivity with what we call limit of detection or quantitation, depending on, on the approach. They're often mix and match. I'm like, no, like sensitivity is one thing and the limit of what you know quantitation in one example is a totally different thing you cannot say well the sensitivity of that instrument is 10 nanograms per round like that makes no sense that's that's sensitivity is a measurement of a slope of our calibration curve and how it responds and how it changes depending on the condition and that that are measured on so again this is the type of things that i now started to, to think about and hopefully educate others and and again to me it's more about uh creating a, a, and also a dialogue because i uh I, i'm fine if i'm wrong i just want to you know sure. get better at this and help others also be better at this and we'll you know have a good 
common sense of use of the terminology. Well, if anybody's watching this right now and disagrees or has any any views, please feel free to put something in yeah. the comment box below this video. We would love to hear from you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because the Absolutely. more sort of examples and instances, the more we can sort of highlight that. And in fact, I can see a book, book coming out of this, AC. I mean, I can see sort of an e-book coming out out of this. You know, you may look for a book publisher at the end of this. So, but... Uh, I don't know, yeah. maybe. <laughs> so, all right, well, look, I think that's all we've got time for today. But uh, OC, it's great to see you. Thank you for that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I do you. have a question. I do have a question for you. you go, go for it. Yeah, I do have a question for you. So who's going to win the, this year's Premier League? Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be Liverpool. I hate to say it. I'm a Man United fan, but I have to I'm say not, that. I, I, I'm not a Reds fan. I'm an AC Milan fan. I want to make that clear. I, yeah, put this on the I, wish, you had not, I wish you hadn't asked that question, but that was the last thing I wanted to say live on video. But anyway, uh, uh, no. it will be Liverpool, but congratulations to them anyway. I just, have a, I just have a good friend from Liverpool. I just wanted to call him out on this video. <laughs> you know All right, well, I'm a Man United fan, sure. so that was the worst thing you could have asked me, but never mind. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, I'll forgive you for that. But anyway, so everybody, um, I hope you enjoyed that. It was a bit more irreverent to what we normally do with Chats with Children. Is, but I think it is quite important, actually, terminology when you're talking uh, about that within science, particularly when you're talking to other scientists and to customers about what, what, you know, what they're looking to use a product for. So I think it is a quite important topic. And if you have got any opinions on that, please, please uh, put a comment down. We'd love to hear from you. Um, look out for maybe another catch up with... Uh, OC in the future when he does a few more blogs and we can talk about some of the other things he's highlighted as well but until then OC it's good to see you again my man hopefully we'll catch up in the near future it may be in sunny Miami who knows um, and, uh, and uh, for everybody else uh, and, and OC of course uh, stay well stay safe and uh, I'll catch you next time take care bye take care bye bye